there's a real debate about what philosophy should be and there's a very powerful academic movement to keep philosophy in the ivory tower, to keep it as an area that merely asks quite abstract questions, doesn't really attempt to answer them or impact the world. I suppose I look to a more practical, engaged vision where philosophy and culture more generally is brought to bear on some of the great issues of life. For the last 10 years or so, um, being an atheist has meant not only thinking that God doesn't exist, but also that religions are somehow ridiculous and poisonous. And that's been a very loud and, and dominant analysis um, by many atheists. This seemed to me to be missing the point, which for me is all about trying to see not whether we can try and disprove believers and somehow convert them to atheism, but rather how one can live a good life outside of religious structures. And that's what my book's all about. Religions offer all sorts of insights into how um, a society can live well. And too often, um, people who disagree with religions focus on the supernatural aspects, the barbaric aspects, the violent aspects, the intolerant aspects. And though I'm very aware that these exist, I also think it's um, disingenuous to think that that's all there is. Religions are complex, uh, sometimes wise, beautiful, and there's all sorts of things that an atheist should be able to get out of them. One of the things that uh, secular people uh, like the most about religions, even if they don't like the ideas, one of the things they tend to get quite drawn to is the architecture. Religions have been unbelievably successful builders, all the major faiths, most of the major faiths anyway. And as an atheist, I think, well, um, what could we do uh, in, in this area? Could, could buildings be used um, for people who don't necessarily believe to produce some of the same effects that religious buildings uh, produce? A feeling of perspective, a feeling of being nicely small in a vast and impressive environment is a dominant feeling of many religious kinds of buildings. I don't see why um, great architecture should, great contemplative architecture, I could say, should only be kept for, uh, 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 for religious people. It could be for everybody. In my book, I, I playfully suggest in a chapter on architecture that um, atheists should have um, their own, what I playfully call, temples. I don't literally mean places of worship. And this got slightly out of hand when people thought that I was literally thinking that we should build places where atheists could worship, maybe reason. Um, I think that doesn't make any sense, but I do believe that atheists should have places of, of contemplation, um, places that capture some of the most beautiful, interesting and consoling facets of religious architecture.